This bout is sponsored by McCullough Couriers. Your referee when the action begins, Mr. Derek Higgy. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He represents MMA Cork and he brings into the cage a record of one win and three defeats. He represents Santa MMA and brings into the cage a record of eight wins and five defeats. Let's hear it for Jess the Cobra Paolo! Here we go, main event. Both guys, forward pressured fighters. Paolo stepping in here on just a few days notice to save this main event. He's up from welterweight. He's talked about moving up to try and look for that premier middleweight belt. So this would be a good stepping stone. Wow. Big athletic guy is Paolo, uses that athleticism so well. Manning turns him against the fence here. Two lads look very intense. As yeah. you were announcing them, they're very much up for it. Yeah. Yeah, Manning's a game fighter, and he just fought three weeks ago in Mantis Facilius, and he started off yeah. so well, but possibly a little over enthusiastic, kind of gave up his back after taking Facilius to the floor, just rushed it a little bit, and, you know, found, it, found that rear naked choke sunk in before he knew it, so. Looking to right that wrong here against a very experienced fighter, Jess Paolo. Jess has won eight of his last 11, and on that run, the only losses came to Conor McCarthy, Paul Buckley, and a title fight against split decision loss to Callan Peace at Clan Wars. So you don't beat Jess Paolo unless you're very, very good. In that run, he's picked up wins over Senan Coakley, Dewey Harrison, Cameron Clements, Jordan Scully, Blaine McGill, some serious names on that record. The best of the best in the country, for sure. Yeah, Jess is uh, building up a massive wealth of experience, but Manning gets a takedown. Wow. Paolo loves these overhooks from both the top and the bottom, but Manning is after freeing that left arm now. Can he posture up and land some damage? As I said, he did take down his last opponent, Mantis Facilius, but then made a little mistake and actually gave up his back almost immediately, so. Needs to play it a little safer here. Paolo's very good with the butterfly hooks as well. It's a weapon he uses a lot. Looking to elevate here. And wow. he's, he's used it very well there. That overhook combined with the butterfly hook is a great way of getting your opponent swept or yeah. even just here helping you to get back to your feet in the scramble. And he's, he's trying to tie up around the neck. Brian addressing it here. Yeah, he's staying safe for now and he, keeping that right hand on the outside of Paolo's leg is yeah. meaning he's, his own shoulder is not getting squeezed across his neck. Now we talk about head position in the last bout, he's using his head quite well here as Manning and making life uncomfortable for Paolo. Paolo tries to step over with that hip throw. Yep. Paolo fighting for this guillotine attempt here. Yeah, and long-limbed fighters like this can, can pull those off from less than ideal uh, situations and positions, so. It was causing Manning to have to defend it a little bit. Manning looks to elevate him, but round one in the books. Great round, very even. Brian yeah. maybe edged it with the takedown. Yeah, a very tough one to call, yeah. yeah. Manning being the natural middleweight here, it's looking like it's a, a very deliberate tactic to try and use that physical strength a lot. And get tight to Paolo and apply that pressure and see how Paolo can deal with it. As I said, Paolo is very physically strong at welterweight, but he is up uh, a weight class here now, so it's going to be up to something, be something he's going to have to get used to. Manning landed a left hand there. Lots of level changes. And they came upstairs with a two-punch combination. Well, that's it. It just gets your opponent kind of focusing a little bit on the downstairs, and Manning pops that right-hand counter in there as well. Paolo just has a very unorthodox, awkward style. A lot of the stuff he does, does, does doesn't look as technically sound or you know proficient as you'll see a lot of other fighters performing it, but 
it's w it works for him and as I said he's reeled off a massive list yeah. of victories against good opponents and he's uh, he's pressing Manning here against the fence now and trying to trying to use his own physicality now in this exchange and he's got the hands connected around that single that high crotch and he's Going to try and possibly drag Manning out from the fence or get the hips in and elevate him. Manning trying to dig an underhook and split his feet. Up. He does well with that left arm underhook, Manning, because he's able to elevate the arms of yep. Paolo and try to weaken that grip a little. But Paolo still has his hands connected. Brian being a nuisance here with the yeah. side of the fist to the face. And it was enough now that Paolo has separated the hands. He needs to connect them again. We can see right here yeah. in front of us, he's Fight trying, he's fingertip to fingertip. But until he gets those hands connected, there is no takedown really he's going to pull off against a guy like Manning. He's got that grip now, that gable grip connected. Yeah. Expect him to, to try and... Split his legs more here. Yeah, Manning just posting well. Yeah, and goes, there we go. Paolo gets there in the end. Again, the long limbs coming in at, at an advantage. Little shoulder bumps to the jaw of Manning just to make, make him focus a little on that. And is he going to get around to the back? Is Manning going to give up the back? He possibly might. Manning needs to keep his back to the fence, does well. Did very well to just there. Use and gets the head, head under the jaw. Big knee to the body there by Manning. Keeps Jess to the cage. Attempts his own takedown here. Yeah. Well, Jess actually attempted to step across with a hip yeah. throw, but Manning had such a deep underhook. That he just he went with the weight and drove into Jess right as he was about to get rolled. It was a lovely adjustment. Jess shoots for a guillotine here. Yeah, and he again, on it. spoke about it earlier. He can get these from weird, unorthodox positions, Matches but unorthodox style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Manning's done well so far to, to remain sound defensively. Tries to pass, gives up almost the top position, but scrambled to his knee well. Needs to just defend that neck for now. Paolo staying busy. Wow. Touching him up in that exchange. Two very even rounds. Yeah. Yeah, it's a close call, this one. Wow. Here we go. Really getting in his face and letting him know what he wants from his fighter. And Manning not looking remotely tired. Buzzed on by this big support that he's brought with him to the venue this evening, you would imagine. Seems like the whole of the room is here in support of Brian Manning, or close to it. Both fighters connect, Manning tries to drive Paolo into the fence. Grabbing on the cage there. Yeah, a little grab on the fence, but he's all right, he's fixed that, and then uh, has that one under hook on Paolo. Paolo trying to connect around the body and reverse Manning and does so. Paolo just trying to bully his way across the fence and just run Manning and catch him off balance on the way, but Manning stays on his feet very well. The position of Paolo, Paolo the underhook and the head position is making it very difficult for Manning to get out of here. see Paolo try and lean his way forward and push Manning down to his hands and knees. He's got that body lock, he just needs to be heavy while he's connected to the, the hips. Manning switches his hips the other way now and finds his way out excellently. Trying to connect his own hands now around the back. He didn't have them connected, so that takedown didn't work. Now he's the one grabbing the fence, but just desperate measures from both sides. Both guys desperate for this takedown. It's a very close bout so far. I'd hate to be the judge call or one of yeah. the judges calling this. If someone can just land something impactful, it could be enough to swing the round. Possibly even swing the whole fight. Paolo's around that He's neck a little bit now. Going for a heavy snap down here. Brian just addressing the grip, being sound at his defense. Yeah. As well, two on one yeah. to just free his chin. You gotta prioritize that neck when it's in a little danger. That underhook now by Paolo, that 100%er, it's a useful weapon. He can possibly turn Manning here if he can drive it upwards. It's a favorite of some of the Sanda fighters and it allowed him to land one or two knees up the middle. 
Ryan working for a single leg here, but his corner calling for him to disengage and get back to striking. Yeah, in a very close round. If you could land a couple of heavy shots, you could take the whole thing. And whole thing. Massive effort by both guys. Hugely physically taxing style of fight. Grinding. No matter Absolutely. which end of it you're on. Again, that front headlock position. It he doesn't connect. Manning still chasing the legs. Switches to a single. Jack McGuire calling from to just pick it up, go hips in and drive upwards, but Paolo is not an easy man to take down. Break and strike the call from the corner. Almost Manning almost had him up. Hoists again. Is he going to go strength. third time lucky and get those hips in? Has the hands connected, drags the leg out of Paolo, gets there in the end, and Just there's the buzzer. buzzer. Wow. Three rounds in the bag, there was no 10 second clacker, so there's a little confusion from the ref, but the time ran out, but what a war over the three rounds. Wow. Let's see how the judges have seen this one. After three rounds, we go to your judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge number one scores this bout, 29-28, Paolo. Judge number two scores this bout, 29-28, Manning. And judge number three scores this bout, 29-28,